Next on News Talk AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show with Kevin Doran. And today uh, on the telephone, normally he's right here looking at me, eyeball to eyeball, but today on the telephone we have Dr. Bob Heineman at his office in Alfred University. And we have some interesting things to talk about today, Dr. Bob. Uh, President has finally decided to do something in Iraq. His critics are saying not enough. But what exactly do you understand him as wanting to do? Well, I think um, clearly he's going to uh, provide uh, humanitarian aid. Uh, food, water, medical supplies, things of that sort, uh, to these groups that are surrounded or under serious attack by ISIS. And I think under that cover he's going to uh, use military force uh, pretty heavily um, in terms of airstrikes uh, against uh, ISIS. I think uh, basically ISIS has become so threatening that uh, the president finally had to act. And uh, I think the one, uh, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, not to use a Middle Eastern uh, term there, but uh, um, was the Kurds really uh, appeared to be folding (laughs) under ISIS. So uh, the one area I think we were hoping to put up a pretty strong uh, front against uh, ISIS uh, was... uh, being beaten pretty badly. So we'll see uh, how these airstrikes uh, eventuate, and apparently they're already underway, especially in Kurdish territory, uh, trying to strike at the ISIS forces. Um, I think, uh, uh, listening to uh, Mr. Obama, we may have the beginnings of a so-called Obama uh, doctrine here. Obama seemed to point uh, three uh, basic principles involved here. One, uh, the the uh, humanitarian uh, need. Second, I think, the fear of a basic genocide against Christians and the small uh, tribal group over there. And third, uh, the uh, made it clear that the government of Iraq had asked us to come in and give them aid. Of course, they've been doing that for quite a well, while. Well, they've been doing that since last year, so yeah, that's no, yeah. that was phony. Well, yeah. At any rate... Uh, that's that's the way he spelled it out. Now you note, uh, of course, he was very careful to point out that he was not sending in any more American troops. That uh, this was going to be airstrikes and humanitarian aid, and um, no boots on the ground. Uh, we'll see how far that goes. I think one of the problems here, and Colin Powell, when he was in the Bush administration, used to make this point. You know, what if this fails? What if uh, we break everything up and we still haven't gotten any um, uh, constructive results? And uh, that's quite possible here. I mean, we could hit them with airstrikes left and right, and they could still uh, continue to be making advances. That would be uh, the point at which I think we would have to reconsider the whole doctrine. Um, But at any rate, I think once these insurgent groups, uh, you get them in concentrations around in terms of large groups, airstrikes can be pretty devastating, I think, in, in those situations. Of course, if they scatter, then it makes it much harder for these airstrikes to make much difference. Well, listen, let's be honest about it. He had a beautiful opportunity to get these yahoos coming down the road toward Baghdad when they were driving our Jeeps and our Humvees and our tanks. Right. <laughs> I kept saying, if you want to get them, get them now. But listen, uh, uh, let let me try to go back to the Kurds a moment here, if I may. The Kurds have been fighting with weapons they stole from the – they have no love for Iraq. They they stole those weapons, and they were old weapons from the Iraqi army – Kurds are great fighters, but they've been asking America for modern weapons for a long time, and we've just said no. Uh, He may be getting, he he may be doing much too little, much too late. So let me ask you this. Do you foresee a situation where, instead of dropping just humanitarian aid and bombing some of these savages, uh, 
he drops in some SEALs and a small but effective military unit on that mountain or anywhere in what we generally call Kurdistan, although there is no such nation, uh, and let our guys do it. We already have some people up there, huh? Yeah, no, I can see him dropping them in on that mountain and some of those places where um, help is needed and uh, they've got to have our, our guys in there to just protect them. Uh, but I don't see him, uh, and I don't blame him, frankly, um, for sending in our uh, uh, specialized, highly specialized, highly trained forces in and having them do the job. Uh, the Kurds have got to do the job. They've got to get uh, the weapons, though, to do it. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I think Obama's reluctant to be passing a lot of these weapons around. Um, and... Uh, so I, it would depend on the level of weapons I think that we could give them. Uh, but I think right now, yes, I think probably we could feed some pretty uh, sophisticated weapons in there and uh, give them a little help that way. I think <clears throat> the bigger picture here is uh, the Russians and uh, the Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Obama spelling out these reasons why we're going to go into Iraq I think basically uh, to tell the Russians they better not think that they're going to start providing, um, uh, preventing genocide in the Ukraine. Or uh, obviously the Russians aren't going to get a uh, request from the Ukrainian government to come in. So uh, the only Putin could say, well, you're going into Iraq for uh, humanitarian purposes, and that's why we're coming into uh, eastern Ukraine. So uh, I think you have to be pretty careful here uh, and not set a kind of uh, precedent for uh, Putin to say, well, you guys did this, we're going to uh, justify that uh, for uh, action in eastern Ukraine. I do hope, and I'll bet uh, he has uh, already contacted the Russians and told, uh, told them that we're going to act. But you may not know. I mean, maybe not. Uh, this whole communication internationally it's just gotten uh it's kind of fallen apart for example egypt and uh united states on its last ceasefire in gaza uh learned that egypt and israel had uh, uh put one together with hamas over the uh over the radio or over the uh, airway they didn't want Kerry involved for some right, reason right. yeah they just cut the united states out entirely mm -hmm. um now, I would hope we're still talking with Putin and the Russians because we've got a lot of other things we should be talking to him about. But you got to think of, about the big picture here, and there's Putin sitting waiting to provide his own form of humanitarian aid there in uh, eastern Ukraine. Okay, let me, let me point out that our guest is Dr. Heineman. Usually he's in the studio, Alfred University professor. I think regular listeners know about this guy. But for those who have not heard our show before, He's an author. He reviews the books for many, many <clears throat> big shots. Um, and he is a personal friend. Ah, believe it or not, we usually fight, but we're not going to fight today. Too many interesting things. Now, Bob, we had a private conversation yesterday, and uh, I found it very, very helpful. Uh, and I want you to repeat what you told me off the air yesterday about the Russian army and how ineffective it is and why Putin may make a big mistake if he deploys his own boys into Ukraine. Go, go over that with well, us. I, uh, I don't see anything anywhere that indicates the Russian army has uh, improved. Now, I assume it has, but uh, as you know, uh, the Chechens uh, have given it a great deal of trouble, although they seem to have that situation finally quieted down, but their invasion of Georgia, that very small country uh, uh, next to Russia, uh, was characterized by a considerable uh, ineptitude on the part of the Russian army. I mean, uh, the Georgian army in operation, to put it mildly, you could take the Rochester uh, Police Department maybe and, uh, you know, um, been comparable. <laughs> How about uh, the NYPD? I'd well, uh, no, I think the NYPD <laughs> pretty solid force there. And I don't have anything against the Rochester PD either. But the point is, uh, it wasn't a terribly uh, uh, 
overpowering force, and uh, the Russians uh, had uh, they slowed them down. Although they brought in a bunch of thugs from Chechnya, and they really were pretty rough. But uh, the fact is, I don't see anything indicating the Russian army is all that effective. Now they do have some really effective uh, weaponry, and so uh, that uh, that's definitely a, a threat. But uh, again. Uh, are going into Iraq, uh, I think we're probably going to show the Russians uh, a few little tricks that uh, they may not even been aware we had, and uh, that may uh, slow them. Down. That might, in fact, make them decide. Okay, Doctor Bob Heineman, uh, yes. I got an email this week. Now, just be patient with me, and I'm going to read this email to you. All right. I won't mention the gentleman's name. He didn't ask me not to, but I just won't. Uh, Kevin, I have listened to you for many years, you and Dr. Heineman. I used to agree with Kevin that it was time for the United States to stop trying to control all parts of the world, come home. But now I see that Richard Nixon was right when he said in the early 90s that America had to take the lead in helping to stabilize the world or other nations like China and Russia would now, of course, I'm adding this parenthetically. Now we also have these kooks, uh, these Muslim extremists who are, are who are playing as big a role as any nation state. All right, then back to the guy's email. President Obama's refusal to take an interest in foreign problems except his foolish move in Libya has proven to me that Nixon was right. And let me add to what this guy says. I'm beginning to see now that the United States simply can't come home. So let me go to my next point, Bob, and then I want your reaction. The talking points on TV keep telling us the American people have no stomach for war. That's always been true, always been true, with the exception of World War II when uh, there was a surprise attack at uh, Pearl Harbor, and that got everybody upset and they were ready to go to war. But a poll a few days before Pearl Harbor would have shown that most Americans did not want to go to war. Right. It's and, and listen, hooray for us. I think with the exception of Germany in World War I and France in World War I, most people don't want to go to war. And then when it's over, <laughs> they say, why, we were right. We shouldn't have been in there. So it's up to leaders to talk about this. And now the Pope is saying, the Pope is saying you've got to do something about these crazies in the he didn't use that term in the Middle East. Right. Uh, here's a guy, that, uh, a man who's always been talking about uh, violence doesn't work, but now he's saying you've got to do something. Well, yes, violence does work. Sadly, it does work, and ISIS is a is a good example. So, where does all this leave us? Well, I think it leaves us maybe uh, in the long run with a little more sophisticated uh, sense of what we can and can't do. And uh, I think the Obama approach really takes a much uh, uh, exaggerated view of what we can't do. The Obama approach is uh, you really can't do much at all. On the other hand, the Nixon approach and your friend's approach uh, in the email suggests that there are things we can do here and there if we uh, use a little... Um, uh, finesse in uh, terms of how we employ our not only diplomacy but our military. But I think, again, uh, Netanyahu and the Israelis uh, have shown how you might put this combination together. Obviously, Netanyahu has put together uh, an alliance, not that they're actively supporting him, but he's gotten the uh, assent of most of the people in, that would be involved here. And then he has followed up with a heavy military punch. Um, and um, I think uh, the United States, unfortunately, goes around with a lot of rhetoric, but doesn't follow up with anything uh, in terms of a punch. And I think countries like Russia and uh, Syria and uh, even the Saudis um, and Iran uh, can see that. And so if you're going to use that kind of rhetoric, you've got to be able to uh, follow it up. And in this particular case, in Iraq right now, um, 
Obama is finally following up with Well, him. we'll see. I, I have a feeling he won't do enough, and it may be too late, but well, we'll got, see. Uh, enough is not uh, not satisfactory. I mean, he has to be successful here. That's right. He's got to. Uh, uh, the uh, the he's thing got, is. He's got to win this one, yeah. Well, the problem here is uh, where is this is getting its support? Now, obviously, I think it's probably getting a lot of support from the Ba'athist military, who we uh, refused to integrate into the army after we kicked Saddam Hussein out. And that's George Bush's fault. You betcha. Bush's people should have uh, used these people. And that's so right. now we got these military people wandering around, very unhappy. But also, I think the Saudis are highly suspect in this situation. Uh, they have no use for the Shiites. And uh, so... Uh, are they supplying... Is Saudi Arabia supplying ISIS? Well, that's. I think it's... Uh, the, pretty suspicious. I I think uh, they would be very tempted to do that. ISIS has got to be getting its material somewhere. Now, of course, some of its stuff they've captured from the Iraqis. Which is our stuff, yeah. Right, right. Uh, But if you shut off their uh, supplies of uh, weaponry and such, then they're not going to be, they're not going to last too long at all. Okay, wait a minute, Bob. I've got to get on to something political, all right? That's political. You're a political scientist, all right? Oh, yeah. Assemblyman... (laughs) It's more fun when I'm looking at you eyeball to eyeball, and I can see the expressions on your face. The assemblyman uh, for Hornell and other areas of Steuben County, uh, Bill Nojay, who has his own talk show, said on a recent show here on WLEA that a poll shows New Yorkers expect Albany to be corrupt. They're not shocked to learn that the governor may be guilty of stopping an investigation into corruption. That doesn't... That doesn't surprise anyone in New York that Albany is a cesspool. So I want to ask you this. Uh, this scandal around Andrew Cuomo, yes. and it's, it has potential to get the guy indicted, yes. I don't think will have any effect on, uh, effect rather on the election. Well, but what will it do, in your view? Well, I think uh, if he's indicted, it will have an effect on the election. Um but uh, as we've said before uh, many times, uh, what Obama wanted to do, and in fact he was coasting along pretty nicely doing it here, this is really one of the clumsiest things I've ever seen anybody do politically, setting up this commission and then turning around and trying to... You said Obama, you meant Cuomo, uh, right? Cuomo, I'm yeah. sorry, mm-hmm. yeah, Cuomo, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, trying to uh, uh, manipulate it and uh, use it, I guess, against his political enemies. But the point is... Uh, he wants a huge uh, electoral mar- margin, and I think uh, this sort of thing is going to narrow that margin um, quite a bit. And that's got to be pretty irritating to him. It doesn't mean he's going to lose by any means at this time. Because, as we've talked in the past, he has a huge uh, war chest of $33 million. I think uh, Hasserino has maybe $2.5 million. Uh, too bad Trump wasn't the nominee. Uh, well, and so... Uh, he's going to just blanket the airwaves with all kinds of negative advertising. He's already doing Asterino. it. Yeah, right. he's got Asterino as a crook. <laughs> right, right. Okay, now, uh, final question for you on the border. Yes. Uh, we had, you, I'm sure you didn't hear it, but we had a guy in the last uh, 45 minutes, a sports announcer uh, from San Francisco, I believe, and he was talking about the scores from yesterday, and then he got into a editorial, totally unrelated to sports. Yeah. He talked about two young guys coming back from Canada to this country with their bagpipes. And one of the bagpipes had ivory in it, and of course you can't bring ivory into the country. So they confiscated their bagpipes and fined these guys <laughs> 500 bucks. And the announcer goes on to say... Well, you see, we can control the borders if you're trying to bring in bagpipes. But if you want to bring in crooks and scoundrels and everybody else, well, you can feel free to do it. I thought it was terrific. Uh, your reaction to that? I mean, we have, listen, let's be honest about it. We have a president who has mentally resigned. He's mentally, he's, he's not there anymore. Uh, what can we do about this border? And you well, got about a minute to tell me. Do a lot about it, but we can't talk about it, finish it up here in 30 seconds, I think, by any 60, means. 60. 60. Right. But it is true, the ivory thing 
there's all kinds of people gotten themselves in all kinds of trouble because they're uh, they've got something that has what is it I don't know forbidden uh, um, materials in it uh, because somebody shot an elephant illegally over in Africa and, <laughs> you know and it's amazing uh, the trouble these guys get into and how much uh, pressure the feds put on these people and you're right and, and all of a sudden across the southern border people come wandering in uh, pretty much willy-nilly time is gone Bob uh, thanks so much for being with us well, sorry right. I couldn't look at your eyeball to eyeball stay on the line just a moment now stay tuned for the latest news we'll be covering this Iraqi situation throughout the day here on AM 1480 with both Fox News and NBC News. NBC News coming up next, followed by local news, followed by Kilmeade, all here on the station where news comes first.